I'm going to show you four ways to use one stamp set. We're going to start with basic techniques, and as we work our way through the projects, we'll get to more advanced techniques. So four ways using one stamp set, and the stamp set that I'm using today is this butterfly. So let's get to it. All right, let, we're going to start with the easiest technique and then move on to more advanced techniques. So the first one is just direct stamping. But if you're going to direct stamp it, let's do something fun with the background. So I'm going to use these three colors of Catherine Pooler inks. I'm really into these earth tones lately, which is hilarious to me because I'm always gravitating towards really bright colors. But for some reason, these earth tones, they get me. They understand me somehow. So anyway, I'm using the packaging from the stamp set I'll be using, and I just went ahead and pressed the ink onto some packaging, spritzed it with water, and then I'm able to see exactly where the ink is going. I can kind of push it around and manipulate the ink a little bit with my finger, but by using this packaging, I can see what I'm doing versus taking the paper and pressing it onto a smushed background, I'm basically doing the opposite. I also can see I want a little bit more of that clay mask, so I'm able to add a little bit more there just using the packaging I've already got. I'll go ahead and dab up some of those puddles at the bottom of the card. I just don't want those to dry so heavy. And then I'll set this aside to dry, right? Doesn't take long, or you can zap it with your heat gun or whatever. I'm gonna be using the Misty for all of my stamping because this is such a big butterfly stamp set, I don't want to mess up. This is such a gorgeous stamp set. I kind of put it on a little bit at an angle, and then I'm gonna ink it up with some black ink here. And I'm using my Misty for a couple reasons. One, it's easier. Two, if I don't get a perfectly stamped image, I can go ahead and re-ink the stamp and ink it up again, as long as I don't move the stamp from the Misty door. That is the benefit of using this. I'm using this little doorknob and it helps press the stamp down. Um, I received this from the person that invented this and I, I love it, to be honest. I usually just use my sleeve, like I'll pull my sleeve down over my hand and use my sleeve to press it down. But if I'm not wearing any sleeves, that's a problem. So I've got my doorknob. It's called something, I'll link it below. It's not called a doorknob, <laughs> it's called something. But I'll link it in case you're interested. Uh, so anyway, I added a little bit of washi tape to the side there. You can use a couple sentiments or in this stamp set, but uh, I'm going to go to the Thoughtful Phrases stamp set, and I'll go ahead and stamp that. This is the only time I don't use my Misty, and I was a little nervous because I'm not known for stamping straight, but I think I did a good enough job here. So for the first technique with this stamp, it's just direct stamping onto some cool little background. If you don't want to make the background, maybe you can take a look at some pattern paper that you have in your stash, and that could work too. All right, so let's go on to the second thing that we're going to do, the second way we're going to use the stamp set. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of ink blending. I'm going to show you ink blending two different ways. The first is with some blending tools, and I'm going to use the same three colors. Uh, these blending tools, I need to re-ink my ink pad, by the way, so using clay mask is taking the longest, but uh, you can get blends by using blending brushes, makeup brushes. There's so many different kinds of blending brushes on the market. I'm sure you have something that you can use, a makeup sponge, whatever, if you don't have these brushes. Uh, but anyway, I'm just blending on the three colors here. And I'm not too worried about there being like harsh lines or anything because we're going to splatter it with water in a bit. Uh, so this is the first way you can go ahead and do some ink blending. And then to smooth out those lines, you can go back over it with the colors to kind of smooth out the lines a little bit, as you can see I'm doing here. Then I'll clean my work surface, and then I'm going to do a little swinking. Swinking is a word that I invented on accident. My words got tied, and I was going to do ink swiping and inking, swinking, get it? I have a whole video doing using a hundred, not a hundred, that's ridiculous, a lot of swinking techniques. I'll be sure to link it in the info tab up in the right hand corner and also in the description if you want to see a bunch of ways you can swink. So you can see you get a lot heavier results. You're just basically swiping the ink pad onto the paper. Oh, by the way, this is watercolor cardstock because I knew I was going to be using water. And then I'll just go in and add drips of water. And these Catherine Puller inks are water reactive, so I just adore. I especially love that top color there to the left. That's the clay mask. Oh, it's so pretty. So then you can set this aside and let it dry, whatever. 
whatever floats your boat. Then I'm going to grab my Misty. This is all dried, by the way. We're, we're good. We're dried. We're rocking and rolling. And I'm going to do a little heat embossing. Now, you don't have to do heat embossing if you want. Again, you can do some uh, just direct stamping. But, you know, I wanted to show four different ways of using this stamp set and each technique being a little bit more advanced than the last. So you could do heat embossing. You could do multiple heat embossing. So you can add a bunch of different embossing powders to the stamp. Uh, for this instance, I did use an anti-static tool and that just helps the embossing powder stick where I want it to stick. Um, you can use some cornstarch or baby powder, maybe in a sock or something if you don't have a tool like that. And again, I'm going and using my doorknob here. Oh gosh, what is it called? I should have looked that up. It's not called a doorknob, but anyway, I like how it's called. And then I'm going to go in and sprinkle on some embossing powder here. You'll see my little notes. Those are the notes of what we'll be doing in the video today. <laughs> a little sneak peek. I always use what's around. Sometimes I pull stuff out of the garbage to funnel my embossing powder back in. This is an opaque embossing powder by Seth Apter, and that just means it's going to show up. It's not translucent, so it's not going to settle into the paper. So it's going to be nice and, and uh, bright if you will. It's a little copper color. It's kind of cool. So I did, uh, that's that. That's the butterfly on this one. And then for the other one, I'm just going to do regular black embossing powder. Now the trick with black embossing powder for me is I don't use black embossing powder. It's just messy to me. I don't know what it is about the black. So I'll go ahead and ink the stamp up with that black pigment ink. And because it's a pigment ink, it stays wet longer. So I'm able to heat emboss with that black ink. So I'm just gonna sprinkle on some clear embossing powder from WOW, and then I'll heat set that. And that is how I do all of my black embossed images. It is so much neater and easier doing it this way, in my measly opinion. So once that embossing powder is dry, you can go ahead and figure out how you wanna finish off the cards. Uh, this one, I just went ahead and popped up a Hello Sentiment strip. And the black really pops against that background. I really like that. And this one is more of a muted, coppery, dark, earthy look. Whatever floats your boat. All right, let's move into the third technique here. And this is actually using some paste I have in my stash. This is Nouveau Glimmer Paste. You can try embossing pastes or anything you might have, any kind of paste-like medium that you have in your stash. And if you only have white, you can even tint your pastes by using some ink refills or even a ink pad. And I'm pretty sure I have a video on that. And if I do, I'll be sure to link it in the description below. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the gold and the teal. I'm using the same spatula. Some of you guys might be freaking your freak, but it works for me, I'm fine. It's all right. And I'm just putting on two different colors that I thought would look good. Now these glimmer pastes work really well against dark cardstock. So I've already got my black cardstock in the Misty. I've already made sure I lined it up how I want it to line up before I uh, adhered the stamp to the top. So I'm good to go. And I am just shellacking on this paste. That's, I'm shellacking it on. Then I'm gonna give it some good pressure. So you are pressing some thick paste against the cardstock. So really do some good pressure here. And don't worry, this rinses right off and I'll show you. So look at that, look at that. That needed a little instant replay. That is so stinking cool. So I put another piece of black cardstock down just to see if I could get a second print and a little bit to transfer over. Uh, but I'm going to continue, I'm not going to keep that, but I did want to show you, you can get a very subtle textured butterfly if you went ahead and did that. But I'm going to add in another color. I'm going in with pink. So I'm just shellacking that right over the top. I'm leaving the gold. I'm leaving the turquoise. I'm not doing anything with that. And I just added a little bit more pink. So then I'll go ahead and press that down. And this is absolutely stunning as well. I mean, can you even, this is just, uh, hi, you're pretty. You really are. So then um, I'm going to go ahead and just swipe a little bit of this pink stuff onto some yellow cardstock. I had no idea if this was going to work. My attempt was to press the butterfly into the paste that was on the yellow cardstock. And I kind of got an impression. It's, it's subtle. It's there if you look for it. Uh, I'm going to actually use this yellow card base in a card here in just a second. But um, I do want to show you it's possible. I like it the other way, but... I just wanted to give you a little hee-ho, give you a little uh, options here, depending on uh, what of the three that you like. So, anywho, glimmer paste. I wash this under warm water. No soap, no nothing. I had an old toothbrush. I just scrubbed the toothbrush over the stamp with warm water and bada bang, bada boom, it's clean. All right, let's take a look at the cards I made. All right, so here is the teal and pink one. 
and I just slapped that over the impressed image from the pink. It didn't really show up. So I went ahead and die cut that out with the coordinating die and just glued it down. That's it. So I made use of that. And then here's a look at the first image that I took. And I just went ahead and put a sentiment on that and left that as is. I didn't need to do nothing else. So that moves us on to the fourth way to use this stamp. And I'm going to make a shaker card. You don't see a lot of shaker cards on my channels because shaker cards intimidate me, but I'm going to do it. So I stamped this down onto some watercolor cardstock and I'm very quickly going in basic, any color. You got markers, crayons, Copic markers, alcohol markers, uh, colored pencils, whatever your coloring fancy is. I wanted to show you options for the other three techniques that didn't require coloring because not everybody enjoys coloring. So this one, doing a little coloring here. Use what you got. And then I went ahead and let that dry. And now I'm gonna take another card base. I want my shaker card panel to be pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and die cut. Here's a look at the butterfly die. I don't think I've shown it before, uh, but here's a look at the die. So I went ahead and die cut that. It's not lined up or anything. I'm not worried about that yet. I do my shaker cards completely weird. Okay, just letting you know that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and glue on a piece of plastic. This is packaging or something. I don't know where it came from. Could be packaging from an old stamp set or something. And I went ahead and glued that down and then I'm going in with some double-sided tape and I'm going around the edges of the butterfly on the inside of the card. It's really the back side of this, not the inside. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. It's not pretty. This side is but a gully. But that's okay. Again, I do my shakers differently, so don't judge me. <laughs> All right, so once I've got my glue there and the ugly panel staring up at me, this is where I go a little off road here. So I actually put my sequins on my butterfly and not inside the glue on the right hand side. Uh, most people put their, and, and, and in other, some cases I would, but here I need to make sure I can line my butterfly up with my stamped image. So I am putting the sequins on the butterfly. Less is more, I think with sequins, some, you know, you don't wanna put so many sequins in, they can't move around or they cover up the image, right? I mean, depending on what you've got. For this one, I want my butterfly to show. So I'm just putting a little bit of sequins, I'm just placing them in the open spaces of the butterfly. And this way I can take my panel that has the glue on it, I can line it up and press it down. So I'm basically doing the shaker backwards. Most people put their sequins against the plastic. I did the opposite. So then once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and glue all that down. Look how ugly that is. But nobody's gonna see it, don't worry. But anyway, it's so funny what the guts of a shaker card looks like. And then I'll just go ahead and hear that down to a top folding red card base. And for this, I'm using my magic mug. I found some sentiments in there and I'm just gonna glue it down and bada bang, bada boom, bada bada doo. What? Anyway, uh, so that's that, a shaker card. Look it, look it, look it. The sequins move around. You can see the beautifully colored butterfly. And I also made another one that's got a vellum to it, which I think is pretty cool too. It kind of hides the image a little bit more, but vellum is cool too to use for your shakers. So what did you think? Did you have a favorite? And if butterflies aren't your thing, you can incorporate these techniques into any stamp sets that you have, really. So roll with it. I want to know what you're going to do and if you're going to do anything. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining me. Subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you next time.